Good day, dear great surgeons. Today we gonna talk about the colorectal chapter with very interesting topics, especially the beloved stomas, especially for the non-general surgeons. Let's crack this chapter together and put our hands on the key on our exam most frequent current records. So that we can crack this chapter just like a piece of cake. So let's be together, together we can. This is great surgeon. To explore an abdomen and know what you do in the abdominal, you have to be familiar with your landmark within the abdomen. Within the abdomen, we have a fixed bowel, which is the duodenum. It's most fixed. That's why most of the duodenum surgeries are difficult. That's because the duodenum is fixed to the posterior abdominal bowl. And by the way, the duodenum is 25 cm long. It composed of four parts. It's formed like a C shape. After the duodenum, you're gonna start the small intestine. To start a formal exploration, you have to take the small bowel from its beginning to its end and the large bowel from its beginning to its end. When we're talking about a fixed landmark, it will be the ligament of traits. The ligament of traits has a duodenum jejunal flexure. It lies to the left of the second lumbar vertebrae, where we have the landmark of the suspensory ligament which is suspending the duodenum called the ligament of traits. It descends from the right cross of the diaphragm to the flexure and the small peritoneal recess are occasionally found on the left of the flexure. Here we can start formally the jejunum which is part from the small intestine. The small intestine is composed of jejunum and ileum. The total length which varies between 4 to 7 meters. You have to explore each inch and each centimeter back and forward of the small intestine. This is a formal exploration. You will be taking the small intestine from the fixed part of the duodenum beginning from the ligament of traits towards the ileocecal junction and its attachment to the posterior abdominal wall by its ligament. <laughs> the large intestine instead will be one and a half meter. It extends from the ileocecal junction to the anus. It's about again one and a half meter. You can identify it by the tinea coli to differentiate it from the ileum. This is intraoperative when you are exploration and you can identify the appendix by the conversion of the tinea coli to form the base of the appendix. Dear great surgeon, you have to differentiate between the jejunum and the ileum as well as the large intestine. Take care, the jejunum is the two fifths of the proximal intestine while the ileum is the distal three or five of the small intestine. The jejunum is larger diameter than the ileum, by the way, and it has larger villi, while it has a less buyer's batcher, while the buyer's batches are more numerous within the ileum. But take care, the mesentery of the jejunum is very specific than the ileum. You will find a very window which is clear regarding the jejunum, while the windows aren't apparent within the mesentery of the ileum. There will be haustrations due to the presence of the tinea coli within the large intestine, which is not true for the jejunum and the ileum as well. There is no haustration for the jejunum and the ileum, but instead you will find the coils of the jejunum and the ileum. While in the intestine, the large intestine, in the colon, you will find the haustration to the presence of the tinea coli, which is shorter than the length of the intestine. In ulcerative colitis, the large intestine is fibrosed and there is a loss of the haustration. Take care. After we have known that we have three bowels in our abdomen, from the duodenum to the small intestine and large intestine, going with the rectum as well as the anal canal. You have now to apply your knowledge of those tubes and how can we use them to re-anastomose and cut and do a stoma. A stoma means an opening. So when you do a stoma and when you 
re-suture and do anastomosis. This is the trick. Take care. The small bowel is clean, it's a holy place, while the colon is a dirty place, especially from the lateral half of uh, the left half of the transverse colon down to the descending colon. The right colon might be a little bit cleaner than the lateral third of uh, left third of the colon. So, the small intestine can be cut and sutured without any fear. While the large colon, the large intestine, is a little bit tricky because it's not a clean content. It's a feces, it's a fecal matter within the colon. We have a well-formed feces, so we fear of infection and we fear of leakage. So, how can we apply this? It's not only the fecal matter and feces within the colon, but as well, the pressure within the colon is high. We fear from the leakage, from the infection, and the high pressure. That's why we come and do a defunctioning ileostomy uh, to decrease the pressure over any anastomosis done within the colon. If you have done colocolic anastomosis, you will have a defunctioning loop ileostomy to decrease the pressure over this stoma. The stoma. The stoma is a Greek word that means mouse. It's an artificial opening within the abdominal wall anywhere in our body, commonly to be noted with the bowel, the small intestine and large intestine. But together we will know that any opening joining to the GIT tract will call the stoma. It's an artificial opening within the abdominal wall which connect the hollow viscous like the bowel or urinary tract either to the outside environment to divert either the feces or the urine if you divert the urine tract it will go with the urine if you divert the feces you will go with the bowel to the exterior which is collected within external appliance the natural opening within our body are the nostrils the mouth and the anus by the way, the umbilicus is naturally closed, so it's not a natural opening, it's a closed natural opening. The intestinal stoma is opening of the intestinal tract into the abdominal bowl, while the viscous is the large interior organ. It can be anybody. It is the viscous is the bowel, the intestine, large intestine. This is the viscous. So what is the stoma? It's a mouse, it's an artificial opening. The duration of the stoma can be one of the types of the stoma. It can be categorized according to its duration or anatomical location or according to its functional reconstruction activity. So, it might be temporary or permanent. Temporary, it means you are gonna reverse this stoma sooner or later. It's most probably done to relieve a complete distal large bowel obstruction causing proximal dilatation or to relieve the tension from a distal reconstructed anastomosis. While the permanent stoma is necessary when there is no distal bowel segment remaining after this resection or when there is some reason for bowel that can't be re-anastomosed. It's usually below the belt line and permanent colostomy usually on the left iliac fossa and permanent ileostomy within the right iliac fossa. This is regarding to the duration and the anatomical location according to like the CNS stoma is a ventriculostomy and the respiratory is a tracheostomy is a GIT. We are talking about the ileostomy, colostomy or even the stoma tube within the GIT in the stomach. <clears throat> according to its function, the stoma can be categorized according to its end or loop or dabber parallel or bishop cop, which is distal ileostomy with inside ileal anastomosis, or proximal ileostomy with end to side anastomosis. The indication for stoma it's either P for feeding like the percutaneous endoscopic gastrectomy in the back tube, or for lavage, like a appendectomy, 
which is the drain or decompression where there is a distal anastomosis and you fear for leakage or infection you do a compression loop colostomy for temporary cause and gonna reverse it as we gonna explain or for diversion when you are going to protect a defunction the distal bowel anastomosis it's merely the same function as the decompression diversion decompression the same function or like the urinary diversion following cystectomy or even you can do it for exteriorization which where you have found a perforated contaminated bowel and you require to exteriorize like a permanent stoma for ABR of the rectum for example or distal abscess or a fistula the preparation for the patient going for the stoma must be kept in mind even if it's not asked in the exam of part A and part B it's very important to know how to deal with the patient concern and reach the patient how the stoma is affecting his life and how it's important so there is a psychological and physical preparation explanation if the indication of the complication of the stoma and request the help of the clinical nurse specialist in the stoma care preoperatively who will mark the site with you or the patient and choose appropriate site that can be familiar with the patient and marking the stoma site with the patient standing up where the patient be able to see the stoma well it's become five centimeter away from the umbilicus spinal umbilical line from all the bony prominence like the anterior superior iliacus spine away from any scar and skin creases to be feasible to change and don't be irritating the patient and away from any point pony or waistline of the clothes and easily accessible to the patient himself to be easily uh, replaced and of course not under a large fold of fat or under the panace the patient must reach this stoma easily it's for his dignity and his lifestyle the stoma within the rectus abdominis muscle cheese is very suitable place and after citing the stoma how can you expect it or examine it you have to inspect palpate and percuss as well as scaltate and br examination within this stoma yes you have to put your finger within this stoma this is the br examination of the stoma you have to be sure of its site and its type is it stoma ileum or colon the ileum opening will be ileostomy the colon opening will be colostomy what is the function is it loop in continuous two opening with each other or it's a double parallel where there is a disconnection between the, the two loops or it's an end stoma you have to differentiate between the type because each type will have its own care and its own expectation what is the discharge coming out of this stoma its color type and amount this is all with an inspection the side the type surrounding skin because the most common complication of a stoma is dermatitis and the earliest <coughs> complication of a stoma will be vascular compromisation the palpation of a stoma you have to know the general abdominal palpation notes is it distended or not distended the stoma itself is it congested or not percussion is there a shifting dullness or not auscultation can you hear a bowel sound or there is ileus may god relieve any ileus in any patient and by the end of the examination don't forget to put your finger within this stoma is a pr of stoma examination the complication of stoma there are many complications but we said that skin excoriation and dermatitis is the very commonest complication to happen and necrosis is the earliest complication that can happen and take care there is a stoma diarrhea nutrition disorder will happen even goldstone or windstone will happen psychosexual disease can occur because the patient's psychological and mental status will be impaired keep this in mind residual disease like Crohn's and parastomal fistula and even the parastomal hernia can occur all of those must be kept in mind so if we want to differentiate and categorize the complication of stoma there will be a local complication like skin excoriation dermatitis candidiasis or even ischemia 
or there is a structural complication which will be retracted, prolapse, stenosis, parastoma and hernia. It's all about the support system or systemic complication which is dehydration, electrolyte imbalance and mal malabsorption. So there is a local a structure and systemic complication must keep in mind. And the dermatitis, yes, dermatitis is the most common and necrosis is the earliest complication. So regarding the intestinal stomas, we all agree that we have roughly a permanent stoma and temporary stoma. The permanent stoma will be most probably either endocolostomy or endoleostomy or the Hartsman procedure with endocolostomy plus rectal stump. While the intertemporary, most common temporary intestinal stoma are the low transverse colostomy which are rarely used except in emergency and emergency procedure for the large bowel obstruction or the functioning stoma or bowel rest pericoric abscess or anorectal fistula that might require reversal this is the temporary types Liost, it's essential management of new needs of certain types of distal intestinal obstruction like the long segment of Hirschsprung disease or complex meconium ileus or gastric cases with atresia, all of those might require ileostomy. Ileostomy are commonly placed to divert the bowel content in neonate necrotizing enterocolitis and arthrocolitis as well as a familial polyposis coli. You will be differentiating the ileostomy from the colostomy that the appearance of the ileostomy is a sprout of mucosa and it's more elongated out and elevated than the colostomy and of course you can find the ileostomy opening is elevated about two to three centimeters from the skin that's to ensure that the effluent passes directly into the stoma bag with minimal contact with the skin and the ileum is external on itself from a spout while the colostomy you can find it um, sutured flushed with the skin the colostomy will be in direct contact with the skin this allow to spout directly to prevent retraction after weight gain while the endoleostomy will find that the pouch is above the skin with two to three centimeters this is roughly about the stomas types that you will face in your exam. Regarding the urostomy, the urostomy is a surgical diversion of the urinary system done for the bladder cancer, urinary incontinence, and neuropathic bladder. So if you have bladder cancer, urinary bladder incontinence, or neuropathic bladder, you will do a diversion of the urinary system which will be caused a urostomy. Uro stomy, stoma for the urine. The formation of the urostomy needs ileal conduit, which is a segment of a viable ileum made like a tube where one end is open, which used as a stoma, and other end is closed, which used as a reserve to reserve all the urine. And the ureters are implanted into this isolated segment of the small bowel tube. And the open end of the conduit is averted to create a similar spout of the ileostomy to allow the diversion of the urine from the kidney to outside the abdomen and collected by stoma back. This is for the dignity of the patient. No one needs any incontinence, either urinary incontinence or fecal incontinence. You have to divert the system if there is an incontinence. And by the way, we are plastic surgeons for the patient who have a very big Bed sore, we tend to do a colostomy, a temporary one or permanent one according to the patient status. If the patient general decision gonna be um, uh, at some point be improved, we will do temporary uh, loop colostomy, uh, or the patient will do an uh, end colostomy if the patient will not be improved or not suspected to be improved. So we will give the patient a loop colostomy not a low, uh, an endocolostomy. Someone asked me why for bed sore you do a loop colostomy. Isn't the colostomy required a diversion or relief a loop ileostomy later on when re reversed? Yes, you are correct. 
but take care the ileostomy will do a high output for the patient and will cause him dehydration but the end stage of the stool will be within the colon so when we do a loop colostomy we will have rarely dehydration unlike the loop ileostomy the patient will sure go through mineral and electrolyte imbalance which will cause him dehydration that's why we do a loop colostomy for a patient who is suspected to have a reversal and we have done it for emergency cases or for making uh, the bed sore clean out of soiling because the anus with incontinence can soil out the bed sore this is for us as plastic surgeon and in your exam by the way take care so roughly what is the difference between the end stoma and the lobe stoma the end stoma has a vascular compromisation and more chance of a stoma necrosis easy to fix the stoma appliance but leak rate are less the reversal is difficult than the loop colostomy so the loop stomas are with good vascularity because the lumen is in continuity as well as there is a less chance of stoma necrosis because it's still the good vascularity but take care it's difficult to fix the leak rate are more than the end and easily to reverse so the end stoma is difficult to reverse while the loop stoma is easy to reverse what is the vascular compromisation we have been talking about regarding the stomas it's ischemia due to operative tissue trauma or intestinal necrosis due to the ligation of the arterial supply or inadequate collateral arterial circulation as well as the venous outflow obstruction may cause a venous condition congestion this more and can cause eventually and necrosis of the stoma so take care the venous and arterial blood flow are both important the arterial blood flow will cause direct ischemia while the venous outflow obstruction will cause venous congestion which will eventually end by necrosis as well another famous question regarding the stoma sites is the operation called hartman operation what is the hartman operation Hartman procedure is a surgical resection of the rectosigmoid colon with closure of the rectal stump and formation of an endocolostomy and during this procedure the lesion is removed the distal bowel closed and the, the proximal bowel diverted with stoma again the Hartman procedure is a surgical resection of rectosigmoid colon with closure of the rectal stump and formation of endocolostomy. During this procedure, the lesion is removed, the distal bowel is closed, and the proximal bowel diverted with stoma. Let's have some recall question regarding the application of stomas. A patient with cancer colon with positive family history. What we will do? Bam proctocolectomy. A band proctocolectomy patient, which type of stoma is suitable? Of course, in the ileostomy. But for a patient who have done already a Hartman procedure, what type of stoma will be used? Of course, in the colostomy. This is a very famous recall question, so let's keep going and discuss together a very famous recall question regarding the stomas and ulcerative colitis as well as the Crohn's and inflammatory bowel and they take a glimpse of the basics of the application of the stomas together we can a Crohn's disease when he have recently done subtotal colectomy we, he removed most of the colon but left out some of the left descending colon and the rectum this patient required another resection because the Crohn's disease in the rectum cause ongoing symptoms and the medical therapy is providing ineffective what can he do he will do now a proctectomy where he will remove the rectum and the anal canal what can he do he already removed the, the colon and done subtotal colectomy before now he completed his resection and removed the rectal stump and the anal canal so there is no continence so we have only the small bowel if we connected the small bowel to the anal canal there is no 
continents here now after removing the anal canal because it will be the anal orifice only to connect the ilia to it. Be humane. If we mutilated this patient and connected the ilium within his opening of the anus, he will be incontinent. And whenever any stool or fecal matter became to form within the ilium, it will go out immediately. This is shameful and this is embarrassing. That's why to live with a permanent ileostomy for this patient will be more honorable. We are made to make our life with honor and change the lifestyle for the patient. An ileostomy bag will collect everything for this patient and make him live proud happily ever after. So regarding the stoma, it's all about what is left and what is to be connect and where we are doing this stoma and why. Is it temporary and we gonna reverse it after that or is it permanent because the patient will not benefit from any further operation is it regarding to be defunctioning or it's functioning it will be reversed or not all of those questions will answer your stoma question directly this great surgeon by talking about the ileostomy what is the earliest complication that can occur with the construction of the ileostomy take care the earliest but not the most common there is a big difference between the most common complication and the earliest. We ask here about the earliest one. Dermatitis is the most common, but it's not the earliest. The earliest complication are vascular one. The vascular complication is the very early to happen complication with the ileostomy. God save us all from any complication especially the earliest one but the most common will be the dermatitis while the earliest complication will be is the vascular one where necrosis construction of stoma may be complicated with several factors but necrosis may occur because of technical errors in the mesenteric division for example or excessive tension during the manipulation of the stoma or failure to construct a fascia defect which is adequate size to permit safe passage for the mesentery of the bowel which will cause eventually necrosis so take care of course many other complications can happen like prolapse or retraction or even the parastomal hernias and very many questions are asking about swelling uh, at the stoma side this is a parastomal hernia but that most common will be dermatitis the earliest complication will be vascular one vascular necrosis and by the way regarding the ileostomy you have to know they are fashioned and designed to be found within the right iliac fossa in the triangle between the anterior superior iliac spine and symphysis pubis and the umbilicus see this triangle yes this is where you can find your ileostomy and fashion it and they should lie one third of the distance between the umbilicus and the anterior superior iliac spine two centimeter skin incision is made and the section continues through the rectus muscle a cruciate incision should be made, a general dilatation to admit to finger. The ilium is brought through this incision and should generally be spouted to a final length of 2.5 cm. Ileostomies that are too short may cause problem with the appliance of fixation. And those which are too long may cause problem with tension and subsequent, and subsequent will be alteration and prolapse. And we agree that dermatitis is the most common, while the necrosis is the earliest complication that can happen with ileostomy. Regarding the ileostomy, you have to know an applied application for the general habit of the ileostomy. Because the output of the ileostomy will be roughly about 5 to 10 millimeters per every kilogram in every 24 hours. This is important. He will be every hour giving for an 80, kilo, uh, 80 kilogram patient. He will be giving at least uh, 800 milli per 24 hours. So the output in excess of 20 milligram per kilogram per 24 hours per day should usually require a supplement 
and replacement otherwise he will go dehydration because excessive flood loss will generally be managed by the administration of oral lopramide and as well the oral intake food containing genitin may also second the output and the early high output is not uncommon and most patients about 50% will respond to the conservative management just watch your patient and manage him correctly so we all agree now that Crohn's disease is contraindication to have an inu anal pouch as it's associated with very poor pouch function and significant complication so even a patient of Crohn's disease with multiple fistula who have been keeping him outside of avoiding a stoma he doesn't want a stoma at all but she has a progressive disease with multiple episodes of rectal bleeding and chronoscopy shows there is a rectal disease and only small bowel study shows no involvement with Zenzacron. So what is the operative strategy for this patient? Of course, it's a proctectomy and endostoma. Give this patient a lifestyle and dignity. We have to be compliant with the patient needs and requirement and we have to make the patient understand that his condition doesn't come with avoiding a stoma. Even in the exam, he is tracking you. He is telling you that the patient is keen on avoiding a stoma. But where, when we have the stoma inevitable, you can go for the stoma. And in part B, by the way, there is a session about communication. And the communication a skill will be in discussing with the patient why he is requiring a stoma here because of course it will be better better than in confidence for his own dignity and lifestyle if you want to talk about the Crohn's disease regarding the Crohn's disease we don't like to do surgeries at all and when we do surgery it's when it's inevitable because the surgical resection of Crohn's disease doesn't equate with cure. It's not cure at all, but may produce some substantial symptomatic improvement for the patient's dignity. Indications for the surgery include complications such as a fistula, abscess, or even formation of structures. And extensive small bowel resection may result in short bowel syndrome. And it's a serious condition where the, the patient will lose many many electrolytes and will go malnourished and can die out of short bowel syndrome if he didn't become treated well and take care the localized stricture may allow the preservation of intestinal lens this is a record question again localized stricture may allow preservation of intestinal lens within the Crohn's disease or even in whatever case of short bowel syndrome causes. After trauma, if the bowel required severe resection and massive resection or aggressive resection, you can do localized structural plasty, which may preserve some intestinal lens. Regarding the Crohn's disease again, the staging of Crohn's will usually involve colonoscopy and small bowel study with the MRI in clysis. The complex perineal, uh, perineal fistula are best managed with long-term draining cetone suture. Again, multiple fi uh, fistula within the inner region in the Crohn's disease, unlike any other fistula, it must be done with cetone suturing, where you are depending on the secondary intention fibrosis by the cetone wire or cetone suture, because complex attempt of fistula closure might cause many complications like any advancement flab may complicate with healing and fistula recurrence so cetone wire is for perianal fistula for Crohn's while the severe perianal and rectal Crohn's may require proctectomy and iluinal pouch reconstruction in Crohn's high risk of fistula formation and pouch failure and this is not recommended we will lose we will lose the whole length of the area. So again, perianal rectal Crohn's disease will require proctectomy and endoleostomy, please. 
or you can do in the colostomy if he still have preserved some of the comb and didn't do subtotal colectomy before. But take care, we all know that terminal ileal crumb remain the commonest disease site and these patients will tend to have a limited LUC curve section. The terminal ileal crumb may affect the anterior hepatic bile salt recycling at, uh, as well and increase the risk of gallstones. Remember, this is from the very commonest causes for formation of the gallstone to the patient have a Crohn's disease. So whenever you have any patient with gallstones and any disturbed bowel habits, please consider Crohn's disease within your mind. Otherwise, you will be surprised within intraoperative while removing the gallbladder and you're gonna cry and ask for your senior, 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 help me, I have a patient with Crohn's disease and I discovered it intraoperative. Don't cry and be a smart doctor like Dr. House and ill it's a sign. On the other hand, regarding the ulcerative colitis, take care. There are elective indications for surgery, include the disease that require maximum therapy or prolonged course of steroid. The long-standing ulcerative colitis is associated with high risk of malignant transformation and dysplastic transformation of the colonic epithelium with associated mass lesion. And this is an absolute indication for proctocolectomy. Take care. In ulcerative crisis, we have two situations. We have elective indication and the emergency presentation. If we have emergency presentation of poorly controlled colitis that fail to respond to medical therapy should usually be managed by subtotal colectomy. While in elective indications where the medical therapy didn't proceed well and long-standing ulcerative colitis cause malignant transformation or dysplastic transformation in elective cases, he will require an absolute indication for proctocolectomy. While in emergent situation with poorly controlled colitis, respond to medication on the emergent situation fail, you will manage with subtotal colectomy. So emergency, subtotal colectomy. Electively will be proctocolectomy. This is ulcerative colitis. So in ulcerative colitis emergency, there will be excision of the rectum in a procedure with a high morbidity and it's not generally performed in the emergency setting. That's why subtotal colectomy is done in the emergency, while excision of the rectum is a procedure with high morbidity and is not done within emergency setting. And alien in the ileostomy is usually created and the rectum is stabled off, which is cut off the pathway here and stabled and left in situ. If the bowel is very edematous, may be brought to the surface as a mucus fistula as well. Saving the patient life and dignity are very important for any patient, dignity and life. And always take care, is it an emergency or elective? Elective proctocolectomy. While emergency, do subtotal colectomy because it's high risk to do excision of the rectum with then a high morbidity for this patient in emergency situation. He is failed to be responsive to anything. Up to you can take this rectum as a, yes, as a mucus fistula. Later on, you can do a restorative option where you do for the ulcerative colitis an ileo anal pouch where you suture and anastomose the ileum to the anal pouch after that later on. This procedure can only be performed when the rectum is still in situ and can't usually be undertaken as a delayed procedure following proctectomy. Take care. This is not done as a delayed procedure following proctectomy, but this can only be performed when the rectum is in situ and cannot usually be undertaken with a delayed procedure following proctectomy. And the alio anal pouch complication include anastomosis and dehiscence, bouchitis, and poor physiological function with seepage and soiling. It's very, very hard operation for the doctor more than the patient. Dear great surgeon, there's a very famous record question record a diagnosis called Broctalgia vagax, a vague Broctalgia, where there is a vague pain within the anal canal and the anus without 
any apparent pathology. It's a functional in rectal disorder characterized by severe intermittent episodes of rectal pain that are self-limited. And the diagnosis of proctalgia vega requires exclusion. It's a diagnosis of exclusion. You will do every possible examination and it will be without any clinical data. You will do proctoscopy, palpation, even MRI to exclude any uh, occult pathology and it will be out of any diagnosis. Then you can say this patient is proctalgia weak. While if you didn't your workup, you can say proctalgia vega. The proctalgia vega is the diagnosis of exclusion. That's why MRI might be required to exclude occult pathology. So always, always, always respect patient complaint. By the way, in the exam regarding the inflammatory bowel diseases from the ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, he won't tell you the patient is ulcerative colitis, neither he will tell you he is Crohn's disease. He will tell you this scenario. A 20-year-old man admitted with bloody diarrhea. He has been passing 10 stools per day. So... There is no normal people do thin stool per day. This is diarrhea and this is bloody diarrhea. And hemoglobin was 8 and albumin is 20. The stool culture is negative. He is excluding for you any other medical causes and any other infection. And the evidence of colitis on endoscopy is found. Here he gives you that there is a colitis. What could it be other than ulcerative colitis? He will tell you he has been intravenous steroid for five days. So this is a medical treatment which now developed a megacolon. The word megacolon is an emergency. His hemoglobin is falling. He is already have been hemoglobin 8 and now it's falling below 8. What can he tell you this is emergency more than this? He already told you that there is an inflammatory bowel disease with a bloody diarrhea. In a male patient, 20 year old, he is young man, so it's recently found. So this is the age where you diagnose an ulcerative colitis and telling you the patient is falling down, his hemoglobin is falling and the inflammatory markers are statics. So it's not because internal bleeding or internal sepsis, it's due to the ulcerative colitis disease, which already failed the medical treatment with intravenous steroids for five days. And now we have a megacolon. So this is the emergency. So this is where we do the subtotal colectomy with end oleostomy because banbroctocolectomy shouldn't be performed within an acute unwell patient. And loop ileostomy is not beneficial at all for the ulcerative colitis. So the patient will do in the ileostomy because he might be having this in the ileostomy as a permanent ileostomy otherwise later on we can re anastomose with the anal if he is becoming well but in emergency we will do subtotal colectomy and the ileostomy for the ulcerative colitis take care so emergency situation for ulcerative colitis subtotal colectomy elective Situation for ulcerative colitis, proctocolectomy, elective procto, emergency up total. And the loop ileostomy is good for reversal, but here we are not expecting for reversal. Why we do the loop? What he can benefit? Did we do any anastomosis to he benefit from the loop ileostomy? There is no other anastomosis have been done. We removed the subtotal colectomy, we removed the large portion of the colon without any anastomosis we can't do anastomosis at emergent situation so there is no need for a loop ileostomy we will do the endoileostomy by the way the loop ileostomy other than the loop colostomy the loop colostomy might be done as a devunctioning colostomy in emergent situation while the loop ileostomy will be to relieve the distension over the colon anastomosis distal anastomosis while the end ileostomy is an end pouch, an end opening from where you get rid of the fecal matter out of this opening without expecting to reverse it. Otherwise, the patient condition become well. If you didn't do any distal anastomosis, do the end ileostomy. If you do any distal anastomosis, either iliocolic or colocolic, 
do a loop ileostomy because you are suspecting you will reverse it later on and the loop ileostomy will be easier to be reversed the small intestine loop ileostomy is a continuous continuation there is no cut off real cut off within the whole lumen but in instead a part of the lumen have been opened with two open eyes in the abdomen while the loop colostomy is done in situations where you are not able to do the definitive surgery like in trauma patient or in a severe obstructive cancer that can't be treated in the site of the cancer because anything or the patient required further uh, investigation so you can go for loop colostomy hope you can understand the difference so again the ulcerative colitis emerging situation you will do something and in the elective situation you will do another something in the emergency subtotal colectomy in the elective pan protocolectomy these great surgeons take care if you didn't do any anastomosis why you do a loop ileostomy what reverser are you expecting you already have an end ileostomy because there is no reversal but if you do any anastomosis in the colon especially you will require a defunctioning ileostomy to decrease the tension so do a loop ileostomy to decrease the tension over the anastomosis of the colon and the loop ileostomy is better than the end ileostomy because it will be easily reversed but if you have done an end ileostomy for an anastomosis it will be hardly reversed that's why we do a loop ileostomy to cover a colocolic or ileocolic anastomosis while in the ileoiliac anastomosis where the small intestine is reconnected to each other there is no fear of leakage there is no stoma required as a coverage for any means hope this made the idea clear for the ulcerative colitis in the emergency situation you do in the ileostomy because you are not knowing is the patient going to be recovered earlier or not is this stoma will be permanent or will be reversed after that so you we will deal with this patient as if he is going to have an end ileostomy someone can ask me can we do a loop ileostomy for an emergent situation for an ulcerative colitis i will ask him what he will gain from two ileostomy what is the gain the function of the stoma is to drain out the feces what is the function of the other eye of the loop there is no need it will increase the rate of dermatitis and the infection we are not saving any anastomosis we have already done a cut within the colon we have done a subtotal colectomy take care there is a big difference so don't memorize the stomas for anything just think about it why you are doing it what you are expecting from your stoma if you have been recognizing and remembering every stoma for each operation you will puzzle yourself especially if you are not a general surgeon it's a matter of a need and function why you are doing this stoma and what you are expecting from it and are you going to redo or not are you going to reverse it or not those are the questions that can puzzle your mind and you can solve any puzzle like a famous doctor house you can do it don't think of the question is gonna monster you you can slay any monster and can slay any question because you are a surgeon whatever your specialty is you can improvise and get the answer with you all with yourself and answer it within less than one minute because you know the concept if you know the concept and understand you can answer any question faces you because you are elegant you can do it so let's have some examples if you have done a colocolic anastomosis what type of stoma will you do yes great you are expecting a functioning ileostomy so we will reverse this ileostomy so we will do loop ileostomy which will be reversed after that after we are confirmed that our colocolic anastomosis is well done great the next question ileal anastomosis what stoma will be done 
there is no stoma is needed because the small intestine is a such wholly clean place. There is no need for any coverage. You are not fearing of leakage. By the way, the hand seven small intestine is cleaner than the stable colon anastomosis. Even with the stable colon anastomosis, you might require a loop ileostomy to be a defunctioning to save this anastomosis. But in the hand seven without stables in the ileum will be more clean than the stable one within the colon or even the esophagus. And this is a famous record by the way. Hope it's clear by now. Believe in yourself and you can conquer whatever faces you. You are the monster for the monsters. You are the storm for every storm faces your life. You are a surgeon. You were born to be special from wherever you are, wherever you be. Never forget us.